Paige. It's good to see you. I hope you've had a lovely weekend full of rest and play and laziness and excitement. Welcome to my sofa today. I think that I'm slowly taking you around my home on a bit of a tour while I uh, video these videos for you. So today I would like to read you a story and the story is by my all-time favourite children's author but it's an author whose books I did not read when I was younger. In fact, I don't think that he was writing children's books for very long by the time I was five or six, um, if indeed any at all. I'll need to research that. This author I discovered during my teacher training year, so the year that I learned how to become a teacher. And immediately I read one of his books, not this book that I have today, but I read one of his other books and I started to cry. He is just amazing. He talks about things that I feel are really, really important in the world. And he does it with such creativity and his illustrations are just glorious. I love them. He actually used to design birthday cards and other greetings cards that you might find in the supermarket a long time ago. So his uh, drawings are very detailed and amazing. I'll begin. You've seen this one before but I want to reread it because it's just that good. It is Voices in the Park. Oh, and it's by Anthony Brown. <laughs> okay, and this book is written in several voices. So first voice, take a good look at the picture first. Think about what kind of person lives in a home that looks like that. It was time to take Victoria, our pedigree Labrador, and Charles, our son, for a walk. Hmm, she mentioned the dog first. When we arrived at the park, I let Victoria off her lead. Immediately, some scruffy mongrel appeared and started bothering her. Oh, I shoot it off, but the horrible thing chased her all over the park. I ordered it to go away, but it took no notice of me whatsoever. Sit, I said to Charles. Here. Sounds to me like she's talking to a dog, but she's talking to her son. I was just planning what we should have to eat that evening when I saw Charles had disappeared. Oh dear, where had he gone? You get some frightful types in the park these days. I called his name for what seemed like an age. Then I saw him talking to some to a very rough looking child. Charles, come here at once, I said, and come here please, Victoria. Victoria's the dog. We walked home in silence. I remember some of you really liked this image here. Okay, second voice. So you'll notice that the font has changed. It looks slightly different this time. I needed to get out of the house, so me and Smudge took the dog to the park. Okay, this is his home. Do you remember what her home looked like? He loves it there. I wish I had half the energy he's got. I settled on a bench and looked through the paper for a job. I know it's a waste of time, really, but... You've got to have a bit of hope, have you, haven't you? Then it was time to go. Smudge cheered me up. She chatted happily to me all the way home. Smudge is his daughter. Okay, I want you to just cast your mind back to the first character in the book. Think about her relationship with her son and think about his relationship with his daughter. And also their relationship with the dogs. Third voice. Okay, the font has changed again this time. I was at home on my own again. So boring. Then mummy said that it was time to go for our walk. There was a very friendly dog in the park and Victoria was having a great time. Okay, here she is. I wished I was. Okay, 
have a look at this picture. This is her side, the young girl smudge, and this is Charlie's side. Do you want to come on the slide? A voice asked. It was a girl, unfortunately, but I went anyway. She was brilliant on the slide. She went really fast. I was amazed. The two dogs raced round like old friends. The girl took off her coat and swung on the climbing frame. So I did the same. It looks to me like they're having a good time. He looks a bit scared though, doesn't he? I'm good at climbing trees, so I showed her how to do it. She told me her name was Smudge, a funny name I know, but she's quite nice. Then Mummy caught us talking together and I had to go home. Maybe Smudge will be there next time. Fourth voice. Okay, look at the font this time. Dad had been really fed up, so I was pleased when he said we could take Albert to the park. Look how colourful it is. This makes me feel like I'm inside Smudge's head and I have her imagination and the world is a place of beauty. Albert's always in such a hurry to be let off his lead. He went straight up to this lovely dog and sniffed its bum. He always does that. Of course, the other dog didn't mind, but its owner was really angry, the silly twit. Oh. I got talking to this boy. I thought he was a bit of a wimp at first, but he's okay. We played on the seesaw and he didn't say much, but later on he was a bit more friendly. Look at these gorgeous illustrations. We both burst out laughing when we saw Albert having a swim. Then we all played on the bandstand and I felt really, really happy. Charlie picked a flower and gave it to me. Then his mum called him and he had to go. He looked sad. Oh, this breaks my heart. He's looking back, he doesn't want to go. When I got home, I put the flour in some water and made Dad a nice cup of tea. The reason that that is one of my favourite books by my favourite children's author is because you've got characters in this book who are from completely different worlds. Some are rich and have big homes, some don't have any of that. And yet I love how the two children find a way to be friends, despite how their parents might be. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. I'm going to reread it to myself after I get off this video because I just adore it so much. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you next time. Have a good day. Bye.